Hey everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar by the CNCF about uh, strengthening uh, your Kubernetes and container security without losing visibility. We're going to use uh, uh, the CNCF project Falco and the Divisor today for this, uh, for this purpose. And we're going to pre present how these two projects uh, can interact with each other. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Luca and I'm an open source engineer at Sysdig. I am one of the maintainers uh, for the Falco project. And uh, but my passion when it comes to computing uh, is security in all its uh, forms. So whether it's vulnerabilities, how to make system more secure, how to identify weak spots uh, and, uh, and correct uh, any security issues or detect uh, potential uh, uh, threats. Uh, I'm uh, at every level, I'm all for it. Uh, you can find my code and my bugs on GitHub, uh, or you can find myself uh, along with uh, all the other maintainers uh, and the Falco community on Kubernetes Slack uh, in the Falco channel. And I will let now Nicholas introduce himself. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Google, and I've been working on Gvisor for uh, the past couple of years. Uh, I'm passionate about containers and security and operating systems. Um, you can find me on GitHub at the link there, github.com slash analycas. And I also hang out in uh, the Gvisor Gitter channel along with most of the other Gvisor maintainers. Uh, so yeah, happy to uh, talk to you. Thanks a lot. I'm very, very happy to uh, present uh, with you today. And also I'm very happy uh, for the work that we've done uh, along with uh, both the Falco team and the Gvisor team. Uh, on the Falco side, I've had the pleasure of working uh, with uh, several people and uh, the, uh, actually want to sh give a shout out uh, to uh, two uh, members uh, of the team, specifically Lorenzo Susini, who uh, is, um, is working uh, at Sysdig uh, with me. He actually joined us uh, as an intern and uh, he did a fantastic, a fantastic job uh, on uh, several projects, uh, including the Gvisor project, uh, enough that now he works full time uh, on uh, open source software, which, is, uh, which uh, I'm very happy about. And also I've had the pleasure of working uh, with Greg, who has been working on Falco for years now. And he, uh, he was very important uh, in uh, getting some base refactoring going uh, to allow this support to be built smoothly and uh, with code that, uh, uh, you know, it's actually uh, well written in terms of uh, engineering and not a complete hack like, uh, like some uh, could do. Also, uh, I've had the pleasure of working uh, with the team that you see in the background for Falco that uh, uh, are some of the Falco maintainers who were very, uh, very helpful in uh, helping us getting this feature upstream. Uh, also, I really want to thank uh, uh, for the Gvisor team, uh, uh, Fabricio, who is the uh, person on the left uh, on the Gvisor team picture, uh, who has been for the most part uh, our main point of contact uh, for this project. Uh, and he was fantastic uh, in uh, implementing, uh, designing uh, uh, solutions uh, to really get this project to work smoothly. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Fabricio. And Nick, yeah. if you want to talk a bit more about uh, the Gvisor team, the uh, excellent Gvisor team. Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of uh, a team that's been working really hard on Gvisor um, for a while now. Uh, there's about half of us pictured here. We're, we're fairly remote, uh, fairly distributed, I guess. So it's hard to get a picture of everyone together. Um, but yeah, Fabrizio did most of the work for the Falco integration that we're presenting today. Um, also, Shambhavi Srivastava and Steve Silva uh, helped out a, a lot too. Cool. So uh, let's take a look at what we'll be talking about today. So uh, today uh, we'll going, uh, we are going to, to tell you why uh, sandboxing containers uh, and applying security at the same time uh, is actually a challenge, what the challenge is. Uh, then uh, we're going to introduce uh, both uh, the Falco project uh, and Gvisor, and then of course, uh, uh, some uh, some of the audience would be a bit more familiar with Falco because it's a CNCF project, but uh, um, and uh, many maybe uh, have not tried Gvisor, and you will learn how cool it is. And then we're going to explain how the Gvisor and Falco integration that we built is actually working. Then uh, we, we can share something more about uh, how it is as a user, what can you get out of it, uh, and uh, uh, how you can interact with the open source communities that are driving these projects. 
So first of all, why is uh, container sandboxing and security a challenge? So um, Nick will tell us uh, much more about Givisor and how it works. Uh, but uh, for, uh, for the uninitiated, uh, think of uh, Givisor as a mechanism to uh, sandbox and isolate your container applications and workloads uh, from the host operating system. So as a security person myself, uh, I actually uh, love this feature and I think it's really one of the most uh, important security features that you can have that is attack surface reduction by isolation. Uh, Givisor is one mechanism that, and one technology that you can use to prevent the your, your workload from performing uh, potentially dangerous operations uh, and to have better controls uh, uh, better control of what you run on uh, and this especially if you think about highly sensitive environment uh, environments it's a very important capability to have uh, and uh, uh, every security person will be able to confirm so um this is uh, great and falco does something for security but it's on a it's on a, a bit of a different angle falco is able to detect Anomalies uh, is able to detect what you want. Uh, Falco is able to gather events from your um, from your applications, from uh, your hosts, uh, uh, from the kernel, and is able to report what you are interested in to you. So it's more about the visibility. It acts like a security camera for the for uh, your uh, servers, if you think about it. Uh, but actually, sometimes uh, uh, we will see it in a bit more details. Uh, if you try to uh, use such a technology in an environment that is uh, deeply isolated with a heightened security, such as the one, such as one that uh, works with Gvisor, you are actually going to get problems because uh, the security controls that you put in place can actually uh, make make it harder for you to see what's going on inside uh, inside your uh, inside your containers. So we worked to actually uh, get no compromise here and be able to both have a, a more secure environment and get, get uh, the visibility. And the first, uh, we, are, we are very happy to say that the first tool that is able to monitor Gvisor workloads uh, is actually Falco. And we'll tell you how it works. So first of all, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, I would be happy to, to spend a, a couple of minutes just to to give you an overview of Falco. Falco is a, a project that uh, is the first uh, uh, cloud native uh, runtime security project that has been adopted by the CNCF. So Falco was originally created at Sysdig and then it was, uh, it's now incubating uh, at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It was adopted uh, uh, a few years ago and it grew tremendously since uh, its adoption and throughout uh, its incubation at the CNCF. The more I work on Falco, uh, the more I realized that uh, probably in every, uh, you know, everyone uses some kind of big uh, cloud deployed systems from companies big and small and at least one system that you're currently using is probably monitored by Falco since uh, the, its adoption is so uh, so big and so important in the security landscape. Uh, and also uh, back in the day, it used to be just one project uh, from Sysdig uh, and today it enjoys a lot of contributions from a lot of uh, different uh, people and maintainers uh, that are uh, from many different companies for many uh, different reasons uh, and it's uh, it's very cool to to see this working uh, to to see people from different backgrounds working together on the falco project uh, so if you've never used falco the its most basic usage is like this so basically falco will take all the system calls that are happening on your system and uh, will alert you based on a set of rules that you can uh, customize uh, and you can specify with a very simple language. So its basic uh, idea is that you will get uh, warnings of notices or errors about uh, what you want. As you can see, uh, every event is also automatically enriched uh, with uh, all possible information from containers. Uh, so uh, any metadata that might come from your container engine, plus uh, um, uh, metadata from your Kubernetes environments. So your pods, uh, your clusters, uh, and, uh, and uh, all this information uh, is uh, natively available to Falcon. 
Uh, Falco is not just a command line application, but it's got uh, an environment and an ecosystem of uh, uh, applications, for example, of um, uh, applications that can connect to it. So, for example, uh, we've got Falco Sidekick, uh, which is uh, a cool piece of software that you can use uh, to uh, forward your Falco events to any other event processing system that you might have, uh, being it a CM or email and uh, Slack integration. And also, it's got a very cool UI that uh, I hope I'll be able to show you a bit later. Uh, so the uh, the basic idea, if we just scratch a bit uh, under the, the surface of, uh, of Falco, uh, we will see that Falco itself uh, is composed uh, by two main parts. One is the Falco along with its own rule engine, and the other are the underlying libraries uh, that allow this to that allow Falco to work. The two libraries are called the libsynth and the, and the libscap, uh, and uh, collectively are called the Falco libraries. Uh, if you have never uh, heard about libscap, uh, but if you have used uh, packet captures in the past, uh, you can think about it as exactly the same as uh, packet captures, uh, but for system calls. So uh, it's got uh, a data source, uh, which is normally a kernel module or an eBPF probe that you install in a kernel, and that uh, is going to um, so forward events uh, to a user space component, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, inside libscap that will simply collect the events. Then what happens on top uh, will be a lot of analysis and inspection by the libsense module that uh, and uh, and that will uh, eventually end up uh, in the powerful and flexi flexible Falco rule engine that will allow you to specify these uh, all these kind of rules uh, that uh, you can see. Uh, the rules are easy to express uh, and uh, are are fully customizable. So the, just uh, to show uh, a diagram of a very simple Falco deployment, normally you are going to run Falco on, uh, directly on your Linux kernel through its uh, kernel module or eBPF probe, and it's going, uh, and one instance of Falco will be able to capture that can be, of course, uh, the, the one instance can be installed by uh, um, either a container or a daemon set in case of Kubernetes or a regular process uh, on a machine, uh, the way it's uh, more fit for your uh, production environment. Uh, then. It, it's going to capture every event coming from uh, all the containers installed, uh, all the Kubernetes pod, uh, and every process that runs on the system. Now, this uh, is the basic way to run Falco. And uh, I will let uh, Nick tell us uh, about how this environment changes when we decide to secure our application, our processes uh, with Gvisor. Thanks, Luca. So Gvisor is a sandbox for containers. And as Luca mentioned, you know, Gvisor's primary goal is to isolate containers from the host machine that they're, on, that they're running on. Uh, we want to prevent container escapes and prevent your infrastructure. Um, the way Gvisor is distributed is just as a simple OCI runtime. And so it integrates pretty seamlessly with Kubernetes and Docker and is quite easy to use in your existing deployments. Uh, Gvisor was developed at Google and used at scale. Uh, it powers a lot of uh, different cloud products, App Engine, Cloud Run, Cloud Functions. Um, and uh, GKE is Google's hosted Kubernetes engine. Uh, and there's also a product called GKE Sandbox that makes it really easy to run your uh, pods that are running on GKE uh, to run them inside of Gvisor Sandboxes uh, pretty easily. Uh, it's also used uh, uh, by a variety of different projects inside of Google. Um, uh, that I can't say too much about. Um, but Gvisor is also open source. Um, so uh, gvisor.dev is our homepage. Uh, and all of our code uh, and issues and everything are on GitHub uh, at github.com Google Gvisor. Uh, so it's a great way to get in touch with us there uh, as well. Um, so before getting into how Gvisor works, uh, we'll maybe say a little bit about you know, why it exists. Um, so with standard Linux containers, those containers are interacting, interacting directly with the host kernel. Um, there's a couple of isolation mechanisms, mechanisms in place, like namespaces and C groups, but fundamentally those containers, those applications are making system calls to the host Linux kernel. Linux is a fabulous piece of software. Uh, I, I mean, it really is, um, but it's also a very large attack surface. There's a lot of system calls. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in that proc file system. 
Um, and there's a lot of vulnerabilities. So since 1999, there have been over 2,000 CVEs in the Linux kernel, and 250 of those uh, have been privilege escalations. And it only takes one bad Linux bug to get a container escape. Um, so you know, if there's one system call with a vulnerability, containers can exploit that to gain access to the host. And from there, malicious workloads can attack your infrastructure or attack uh, other uh, containerized workloads. So this is something that we want to prevent. And this is why GVisor exists. Uh, so GVisor, the architecture, uh, is a little bit more complicated. Um, there's a few different components. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is this uh, GVisor kernel. Next slide, yeah. So this is the one uh, that's in bold right there, kind of on the, the left-hand side. This is um, the main component uh, of GVisor. Um, this is a fully Linux-compatible kernel. Um, so we've taken all of the system calls that Linux has, and we've implemented them ourselves uh, in GVisor. And I really want to stress, these are full system call implementations. This isn't just like a pass through or a filter. Um, when the application uh, is running and it's making system calls, it thinks it's interacting with the host kernel. It's actually interacting with the GVisor kernel. Um, so we've implemented all of the Linux system calls. We've also implemented all of the common Linux file systems like proc, dev, sysfs, tempfs. This is a real kernel. So there's all of the kernel primitives that you'd expect. There's memory management, futexes, timers, VDSO. Um, there's actually a full TCP IP stack that we run uh, inside of the GVisor kernel. Um, GVisor kernel is written in Go. We chose that for the memory and type safety that Go provides. Um, you know, by getting rid of use after free or out of bounds uh, bugs, you can sort of write off a large class uh, of, of bugs right there. Um, of course, we still have to be careful and uh, you know, not everything is safe, um, but by using a memory and type safe lang uh, language, we get uh, some more guarantees of safety. Go also has great concurrency primitives uh, that make it a good fit for operating systems. Um, and Go as a language is also just very productive uh, and a fun language to work with. Um, uh, it's, it's really great. Um, yeah, and the last thing I'll say maybe about the kernel is this kernel runs in user space alongside uh, the container. So from the host's point of view, uh, the, the host Linux kernel just sees GVisor and the container running together. It just looks like any other process from the host's point of view. Uh, a couple other components that I'll mention, um, the containerized workload, the, the GVisor kernel plus the container, uh, run inside of a setcomp sandbox. So setcomp is a utility um, uh, that Linux provides to allow you to restrict the number of system calls or restrict the set of system calls that a workload can make. So uh, the container and GVisor together um, are only allowed to make a very small uh, uh, set of system calls to the host. Basically, those needed by the Go runtime plus a few others. Um, if you go on our GitHub, you can actually see uh, what the list of system calls allowed is. It's very restricted. So for example, the, the container and kernel are not allowed to open a file. Uh, they're not allowed to create a socket. Um, so they're uh, yeah, quite restricted. Um, if the container does, I mean, containers often open files, those, uh, the container opens a file, the GVisor kernel will intercept that system call, and it will forward it to this file system proxy that runs outside of the sandbox. So the file system proxy um, is responsible for handling all of the file system access, so all of the opens, statting, walking file system paths, et cetera. Um, this provides another layer of security um, around GVisor. It's another area where we can um, uh, sort of dictate what the sandbox can do. Um, and the file system proxy also has its own set of setcom filters. So, um, you know, all, all of this is, of course, it's allowed to open files, unlike the, the GVisor kernel, but all of this is about providing multiple layers of security around the containerized workloads. Yeah, so that's uh, sort of what this um, picture here is showing. So these multiple layers lead to defense in depth. So the GVisor kernel itself is the first layer of defense. 
Um, actually, our security posture, we assume that the GVisor kernel is compromised. Um, even if that is the case, we still have enough layers to protect uh, the host and infrastructure. Um, we've got the seccom filters that I just mentioned, so you can't open a file or create a socket. Um, the entire kernel and workload runs uh, as UID and GID nobody with no capabilities. Um, there's namespaces around those. These things run an empty, uh, an empty user namespace. And lastly, around all of that is the pod C group. Um, so all of these different layers make it harder um, and harder for a malicious workload to break out of its container and reach the host. Um, yeah, so I, I mentioned that GVisor is uh, you know, distributed as a, an OCI runtime that plugs in uh, to Kubernetes. Um, GVisor can run on bare metal, and it also works um, inside of a VM with nested virtualization. Um, so I, that makes GVisor a really good fit for your cloud Kubernetes deployments. Um, yeah, and then so you know, all of these mechanisms I just talked about are about preventing container escapes, um, which GVisor is pretty good at. Um, but prevention is not detection. So while GVisor can prevent these container escapes, we never had a mechanism to actually detect when a malicious workload was trying to escape. Um, and that's why we're really excited about the Falco integration, um, because that's what we can provide now. Thanks, uh, thanks Nick. Uh, I, uh, I think uh, uh, now we, uh, we have uh, all the information to understand uh, why our project uh, has come to life uh, and uh, what's the problem that we had when uh, we first started to monitor container, uh, container workloads that were actually sandboxed within Divisor. As Nick uh, explained uh, before, actually the uh, the interactions with the kernel in case uh, of the uh, Gvisor sandbox uh, are very different from uh, the regular interaction that you get with native process. So what would happen if we try to, uh, to just plug Falco as uh, out of the box, uh, as we always do into such, uh, into such an environment? Uh, well, we'll get a very confused Falco because uh, if you remember, uh, Gvisor not only is a different process, so instead of actually having uh, our, our normal process, uh, we're going to have a Gvisor kernel process, so which is a different binary. It's uh, written in Go. It does other operations. It has a different set of interactions uh, with the Linux kernel than the normal uh, application would have, the normal process would have. And also, it does indeed uh, execute some of the operations uh, that uh, our process will do, but it executes them uh, in a very filtered way and, uh, um, and also with second filters uh, already in place, which means uh, that uh, whatever Falco will see at the end uh, is uh, something, but it's definitely, definitely not what uh, our original process does. And uh, as Nick uh, uh, correctly mentioned uh, before, what we want to do is that we want to detect uh, suspicious behavior that is uh, executed by a potentially uh, compromised application or a potentially uh, malicious application, or even something that we are actually trying to trouble shoot because Falco can be used for uh, many different types of use cases. So whatever misbehave we have in mind, we want to get it straight uh, from the application. And we cannot even rely on the uh, capabilities that Falco has to, uh, for example, tell us uh, about file system usage or, uh, or system calls that interact with the file system because even the file system uh, to, to get uh, secure, the, the right security properties uh, is proxied in Gvisor. So how do we actually solve this uh, problem? Well, uh, first of all, uh, if you recall, Falco itself is not a monolith. It's composed by the... Uh, different uh, set of pieces uh, that interact together. And the piece that we're actually interested in uh, is libscap, that is the foundation on top of which uh, everything uh, is built. 
So LibScap uh, inside of itself uh, isn't that complex. Uh, it, I mean, the, the mechanism that it has uh, to collect events can be very complex, but uh, uh, itself, uh, it acts as a collector of events, exactly like, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, a packet capture. You've got uh, a system, system code capture. So what we need to do is uh, we needed to refactor and to work on LibScap uh, in such a way that is able to accept uh, a new source of system call events uh, that uh, are coming not from the kernel, but uh, directly from a user space uh, from the divisor kernel itself, which, it, which will be able to send them uh, in, some, in some way. We have decided to use a Unix domain socket for this, uh, and uh, uh, inside uh, it's uh, talking protobuf uh, to extract events from uh, the divisor kernel as they happen directly from the application and reach them on the divisor side with metadata about container and every information that uh, the um, that uh, is not available uh, straight uh, into the host and the Linux kernel that uh, Falco usually uh, queries to, to understand. And uh, then it will forward them uh, uh, straight into Falco, which on the other side will, uh, um, will act as a server, receive uh, the connection from the divisor kernel, and uh, will be able to read the format that the divisor provides uh, and convert it uh, into the uh, LibScap internal representation that can then be used by anything on top of it. And this is pretty cool, I think, uh, for uh, several reasons, uh, including the fact that uh, being uh, this happening at a lower level, any other project that uses the Falco libraries, uh, which are several of them uh, since the Falco libraries are open source uh, and are uh, used as a base for uh, not just Falco, but also other research projects uh, and uh, other open source software, will be able to enjoy this, uh, this um, integration and will be able uh, to seamlessly connect uh, to, uh, to, to Divisor and to read the uh, events that are happening uh, in the sandboxes as if they were happening uh, directly on the kernel. Um, also, if you recall how Falco normally works uh, with one instance of Falco per node, uh, this uh, integration uh, allows it to just work in the same way as it does uh, with a regular kernel. So you will be able to uh, spin up a Falco instance uh, in your node and uh, we'll show you how uh, in a second. And then this will be able to connect to any number of sandboxes that are uh, running, uh, that uh, are managed by Divisor via the same uh, server as the, the socket uh, is the same and Falco will act as the server and will handle everything. In the, and uh, that doesn't break user experience in any ways because that's exactly what Falco does when it monitors several pods and se or several containers within the, same, uh, within the same system and the same cloud node. So now I'm eager to show you how this actually works uh, in a real system. So we have a, a cloud instance here, and uh, we have installed uh, both uh, uh, RunSC, which is the tool that is used uh, to monitor, uh, to uh, actually make the magic that uh, Nick described for Divisor happen, and uh, we also installed the Falco. So we can check, first of all, that uh, the versions of our tools uh, are correct. So I've got uh, uh, Falco uh, version uh, that needs to be at least uh, 0.32.1, and we've got 0.32.2, which is the latest uh, at the time of, uh, of speaking. And then we've got uh, run a C as well, run a C version. And uh, the run C version uh, is uh, expressed in this case uh, as a timestamp. And uh, as long uh, as it's, this is newer than the 4th of July, 20, uh, 2022, it's going to, it's going to work with uh, this integration. So uh, I'm now going to start uh, Falco, uh, start my Falco instance. And uh, on, uh, on, my, on my terminal, I will add a couple of parameters uh, that uh, will uh, that will allow us uh, to enable the integration. First of all, uh, I will need to specify a configuration, a Gvisor configuration. Now, uh, for the whole instructions about uh, how to set this up, uh, you can uh, refer to the tutorials that are present uh, on the Gvisor blog and on the Falco blog. But uh, just to show you, I have uh, simply installed a little file, a little configuration file, which uh, is 
I'll call uh, pod init.json, which is a, um, a file that uh, uh, instructs Gvisor to collect uh, some types of system calls and to forward them uh, straight to Falco. I've also configured the uh, Gvisor via the runsc install command uh, to, uh, to receive this configuration when it starts new pods. And so uh, we can see the configuration uh, into the, uh, my Docker daemon has installed this configuration uh, into my Docker daemon configuration. So if I specify as a runtime, a runtime that uh, I call the runsc Falco, then uh, this uh, integration uh, will be online. So we're going to start Falco. Falco is going to, to start and, uh, and tell us that uh, uh, the event collection from Gvisor is enabled and uh, it has received our configuration file. The configuration file is shared between Falco and Gvisor so that uh, uh, the two pieces of software can make sure that they are aligned in terms of syscalls that they collect and the uh, socket path and the, all that, uh, all that uh, tunable configuration uh, things. So I am now going to run a pod uh, directly via via our my regular Docker. So Docker run. I'm going to set the runtime as a run C Falco. That is the one that we've configured here, and uh, I'm going to run my image, which is just any image that we have, and start it up. This workload is now running uh, under Gvisor, and uh, it's also uh, be and it's also uh, monitored by Falco. If you don't believe that this is running under Gvisor, let's take a look at this the message. And uh, I think this is uh, uh, this is something that uh, I'm not expecting in a regular in a regular work uh, in a regular workload. This is actually telling me that uh, Gvisor is enabled. So. Let's try to uh, take a look and see uh, what uh, a suspicious event my, uh, might, uh, might be. So I'm going to first open the etc shadow file, uh, which uh, is not something that a regular user does. And as we can see, this has generated an event in Falco. Uh, I have used uh, the, JSON, uh, the JSON format to take a look at the events, but uh, we can, as, as, uh, as I'll show you, we can uh, see, see these events in uh, whatever format we see fit. So we can see that the program cat has opened ATC shadow, and then we've got the PID, we've got the container ID, and everything the container ID just uh, works uh, seamlessly as if the container was running uh, into our application. Another thing that uh, could be suspicious uh, is the fact that uh, some versions of NetCat uh, are have an E flag that not all versions support, but uh, uh, for uh, all old school hackers out there, we all know that uh, you were able to just do uh, this and uh, with adding some bunch of parameters uh, uh, to do that. Uh, my version doesn't support it, but Falco will still detect our attempt, uh, even if it doesn't do anything, but it's it will still detect uh, our suspicious attempt. Also, I um, I have uh, uh, I would love to show you how this uh, looks uh, also in a in a different uh, in a different user interface. So I've got uh, the Falco Sidekick UI over here, and uh, as we can see, uh, all our all our uh, events have been collected. We've got our working events. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the, the, our Netcat uh, remote uh, code execution attempt in our container. We've uh, got the, the read of the ATC shadow uh, file that we've got here the, with, along with the file name, along with all the context information that uh, we, we, might, we might want. We might filter by containers. Here and so we can take a look uh, at the, everything that this container has done, and this works in the same way whether you're using uh, whether we're using Gvisor or not. I, I hope uh, you you enjoyed uh, this uh, little trip inside uh, inside Falco and Gvisor. So. If you have been following the Falco project uh, for a, a little while, uh, you might uh, know that uh, back at the beginning, probably at the time when the CNCF uh, uh, adopted it, that was, uh, I believe, uh, uh, quite a few years ago, at least four years ago, uh, there was only one way to capture system calls, and that was it. So you've got your libscap, your kernel module, and uh, a monolith on top of it that would just run uh, the rule engine. Then later, it got uh, support for Kubernetes audit events, which are events that are not system calls, are just something different. 
And after a while, it also got support for eBPF, which is a very cool technology that uh, allows you to, uh, to write code that runs directly into the Linux kernel without having to write the kernel module in a much safer way. Uh, this comes from network uh, and uh, now works for system call. And it's a very exciting technology that Falco has fully supported uh, uh, since uh, years now. Then later, uh, we decided, uh, or at least uh, the Falco community has decided uh, that uh, just having Kubernetes audit event wasn't enough. And uh, now there is a full-fledged plugin framework, framework where you can uh, upload the whatever data you want into a plugin that will be consumed by, Fa by Falco and will let you uh, interact with, uh, with the same language and with the same rule engine that uh, you know and love from system calls, but it will uh, work for any uh, event, for example, uh, cloud events. Uh, we have an uh, open source plugin for cloud, Cloudflare, for example, the one for the Kubernetes audit event. Uh, you could uh, think about something uh, for GCP, for example, or there's, uh, and this is very new, and there's a lot of uh, exciting things that are happening in the community on there. And now we uh, were able to refactor it even more to make it even more modular to add a new Cisco engine and new way of collecting events. And so, uh, thanks to uh, our collaborations, thanks to the community, and thanks to uh, the, the work done within the CNCF. Falco is, uh, I, I can see, uh, since I've been following Falco for a, a while, Falco really growing and getting uh, more and more capabilities uh, by uh, every release, pretty much. Um, uh, we would like to uh, now tell you just a couple of things about uh, this uh, integration project. As you can see, it's uh, working with the new versions uh, of uh, Falco and Gvisor. And it's, uh, I think, the latest brand new feature that uh, was added uh, in, uh, in the latest uh, versions uh, of Falco. So we are all very excited uh, as it's new and, um, and cool. Uh, and um, uh, but uh, the way it works uh, is a little bit different from the usual uh, kernel collection event because uh, right now, since all the captures are happening in user space, every system call will actually need to be supported on both the Gvisor side and the Falco side because Gvisor will need to be able to transmit the system call data and Falco will be able needs to be able to receive it and convert it into its internal representation. Uh, Falco itself has support for a lot of events that are more than 290 uh, different uh, system calls and events that you can use in your security rules. Uh, uh, the, the Falcon Gvisor integration does not support all these events right now, but uh, we have uh, chosen a subset of them uh, that are the most common, the ones that, uh, as you could see, can, uh, can uh, be most useful in the def default rules and in the rules that most security engineers are interested in. But of course, there's room for, for many more and uh, uh, it's possible uh, to I don't think it's uh, possible to have the full coverage of events uh, just because uh, Gvisor and Falco work uh, uh, in a slightly different way. Actually, Gvisor works in a slightly different way than a regular Linux kernel, and the events that Gvisor processes are uh, uh, sometimes a tiny bit different from them, but uh, I believe that uh, the majority of events can be imported and just with support from both sides can, can work directly on, uh, in Gvisor. The good news is that uh, it's easier to implement an event uh, uh, in, uh, in the open source Gvisor and open source Falco on the user space than it is to, for example, write kernel code or eBPF code to collect a new event because you don't really have to mess with kernel. You don't have to uh, think about all the uh, compatibilities with all the different versions of the kernel, which is one massive pain point uh, when you are deal with uh, directly with the uh, Linux kernel as a developer. You don't have to fight with the eBPF verifier, which is very cool, but also very picky about your code. And so uh, if you, if for both the Gvisor team and the Falco team, and actually any contributor that is interested, it should be easy along with our help, uh, getting support for more events in case, more events in case uh, we see that we need them. So 
uh, the our last goal in here is to uh, invite you to join the community if you're interested and contribute. Uh, both Gvisor and Falco have a thriving com community and the Falcon one is supported by the CNCF. Uh, so you know it uh, has some uh, pretty high standards uh, in terms of uh, inclusivity and uh, openness uh, of, uh, of everyone, uh, pretty much everyone's back. Well, in terms of usage, uh, we have actually seen usage from, uh, from uh, early adopters of this technology. For example, Mercari, which is a, a global marketplace for buying and selling based in Japan, uh, is actually a shared user between Gvisor and Falco and uses both technologies and does not really want to compromise and pick one over the other when it comes to securing their, uh, their environments and their containers and their applications. So uh, Mercari has had the chance of trying this out uh, and uh, uh, especially in the environment where they operate uh, that is uh, highly regulated uh, they want uh, the best in terms uh, of uh, security and so uh, they were very happy to see how this can drastically improve container security for uh, for their use cases um, also i would like to just uh, as uh, to, to recap what uh, we have discussed today, that uh, when it comes to security, we want to detect anomalous behaviors within workloads, and uh, we want to integrate our security system with uh, existing rules uh, and open source, uh, um, open source rules and the open source uh, uh, technologies as much as we can. We want to uh, monitor our syscalls and also we want to have workloads that are natively sandboxed and they uh, are actually uh, prevented from doing some operations uh, that might actually uh, impact uh, our systems uh, at uh, a higher level and make it uh, a, a simple security incident escalate. So we can use Falco to, to monitor container nodes and still enjoy uh, high security provided by Gvisor. Um, I would like to add just a couple of uh, links to both the Gvisor website on gvisor.dev, you've got uh, a cool tutorial that uh, guides you step by step to get an environment just like the one that I showed you that uh, has both uh, Gvisor and Falco support. And you can find out more on the Falco blog as well that uh, will go into a bit more details about how you might want to configure Falco in such an environment. And uh, if you are not uh, familiar with Gvisor, I would uh, uh, encourage you to take a look at gvisor.dev since uh, there is a, a lot of cool information uh, about how this uh, technology works uh, and uh, how to contribute in case you're interested uh, and uh, in case uh, you want to learn more about Falco. Uh, a book recently came out uh, from O'Reilly that you can get uh, uh, that uh, was written by Loris, the uh, original author of uh, Falco and, and, uh, and um, Falco Containers to, to learn more about the technology. And uh, regarding Falco, I don't think I need to, to add it uh, to add uh, much more since it's a CNCF project. We know you just go on falco.org and you will find uh, our inc our community on Twitter. The, you will find us a Slack channel. Uh, we hold uh, weekly meetings that uh, everyone is welcome to participate in. And uh, I think. Uh, um, Maybe Nick wants to share a bit more about uh, uh, contributing uh, and the cool community around uh, Gvisor as well. Sure. We've plugged gvisor.dev a few times already, but it's a great place to go. There's a getting started guide if you want to just you know download Gvisor and start experimenting with Docker, or if you want to integrate it into your existing Kubernetes deployments. Uh, all of those guides are there at gvisor.dev. There's also some really good architecture um, um, guides. If you're curious about some of the things I talked about today and you want to learn more, um, we've got a lot of documentation uh, on gvisor.dev. Um, all of our code and issues and pull requests from the community go through GitHub. Um, so that's uh, if you search for gvisor GitHub, you will find it. Um, and then most of us hang out in the gvisor Gitter chat room. So that's another good way to get in touch and ask questions, um, meet some of the uh, some of the engineers working on gvisor. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, it was great uh, working on this project, really. Likewise, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for, for attending.